Um, Kai, I think you're up next. What do you got? Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll share. Okay. That should be full screen now. The the PowerPoint. Yeah, you're good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then let me start. Um, so this is some very basic stuff. After all the great things we watched today, um, it's just um, a theory about how big or how wide holes for woodworms crew chucks should be. Um, I think um, you in the beginning they had these um, conical screws or tapered screws like normal wood screws and um, the problem is if you drill a hole like this and the screw is tapered it won't grip in the the upper part of your hole that you drilled so um, you lose the the holding power up here and you have to drill a rather deep hole to make the conical screw or um, tapered screw hold in this area. So if you only want to um, drill a shallow hole for your woodworm screw, this um, doesn't work very well. So uh, manufacturers came up with the idea to make the um, woodworm screw not tapered, but with um, straight sides. And now the, um, the diameter or the inner diameter of the woodworm screw is the same as the, um, the diameter of your hole. And um, you can hold the workpiece over the whole length of your woodworm screw. Um, so that's the second thing. And then sometimes you get woodworm screws that are a little bit tapered at the end, and then they are straight or have parallel sides like this. And that will work fine as well because the, the tapered part will put or pull the, um, the screw into the, the wood and then kind of um, this cuts its own um, threads into the wood. The only problem with this method is, or this kind of screw is, if you drill the hole very small or as small as your tapered end here, um, the screw will still be pulled into the wood, but it might split the wood or maybe break your screw if the hole is too small. So that's maybe something you have to, um, to keep in mind. And I tried that out. Um, oh, that's... Um, a photo Dave um, sent me. I hope it's okay, Dave, if I show that. On the, the left-hand side is the HTC worm screw. That is slightly tapered at the end. So with this screw, you get away with a, a smaller hole than the, the core diameter down here because it will pull itself into the wood. And that's the um, the Exminster um, woodworm screw that started the the discussion with um, parallel sides here, and um, with this, it's a bit of a problem to get the the screw into the wood if you drill a smaller hole than the core diameter because that won't pull itself into the wood easily. So. Um, I measured the, the core diameter of the, uh, the woodworm screw that comes with the SK100 Exminster um, chuck. Um, Exminster does three different sizes of woodworm screws, and that seems to be the medium one. Um, and in their catalog, they write you should use um, a quarter inch drill, which is 6.3 millimeters. And the screw diameter actually is six point uh, seven point three millimeters. So I guess they want to be on the safe side, rather make the hole smaller so that you get a lot of holding power. But it's difficult to get the screw into the, the wood in my experience. So I'd rather drill the hole a little bit bigger um, either seven or 7.5 millimeters, depending on how hard your wood is. And I tried that out. I drilled um, 
a, a seven millimeter hole into pine, and then I used my long um, screw chuck key, no, chuck key, my long chuck key um, as a kind of lever to, to test whether that's really um, a good fit or whether it holds well. And it held really um, well, and that was dry pine. And um, I also tried a 7.5 millimeter hole in wet ash, and still it held fine. And then I cut that into half, and you here you can see the the threads that the the woodworm screw cut into the wood. That's where the hole started, and then that's the other threads you you get. So, um, and I tried very soft wood. It was a draw front. I don't know what kind of wood, something exotical with a 6.5 millimeter um, pilot hole. So that's near a quarter of an inch. And um, the um, you can see my fingernail here. I tried to push the fingernail into the wood. So it's rather soft stuff. And with a 6.5 millimeter pilot hole, I had it bit of a difficulty getting it onto the screw, but it held fine. So, um, my and then I also added a photo here of the this chuck I normally use. It's a face plate, and you can put a screw or a woodworm screw into the, the center of the face plate. So you can either use it as a, um, a screw chuck or a face plate or you can use it um, in a combination of both. Um, that's actually a system that um, Woodfast made maybe 20 years ago or so. Um, I kept the screws from my Woodfast chuck and had a, a faceplate turn for my big lathe because that has a kind of unusual thread and um, I couldn't get a faceplate to fit it. So um, in conclusion, for harder woods, the pilot hole can be a little larger than the quarter inch that Exminster um, recommends, I think, maybe seven or 7.5 millimeters. Um, and that makes it easier to start the, the thread in the wood and to um, screw the wood onto the, the chuck. And for soft wet wood or very heavy turning planks, I'd rather use a face plate with um, several screws. Um, so that's the, the better holding um, option there. And what I usually do is I use this one as a screw chuck, screw on my plank. And if it doesn't hold well, and I try to kind of screw it on really hard on the, onto the, the woodworm screw, then um, I use additional screws through here. Of course, I have to un, um, take it off the lace, the faceplate then, and put it into the plank first, put my additional screws in, and then put it onto the, the lace. And the, the good thing is, normally if you turn bolts and you don't want the, the core, um, it doesn't uh, matter whether it has an additional hole in, in the middle. Oh, and, okay. and um, what did I want to say? It doesn't matter if you have the additional hole in the middle. So it also centers the, the face plate in the, in the bowl plank, which is um, quite handy. And this is actually um, a six millimeter, no, let me say 6.5 millimeter screw, I think. And I drill a six millimeter hole for it. So also a little bit smaller than the, the tape uh, and it's not tapered. Yeah. So, um, that's my theory or my experience so far. Maybe you have comments on that. Um, or Dave, you want to, to comment on what you tried out? I stopped the screen share so we can discuss. Yeah. Any comments or questions for Kai? I have uh, uh, a, a screw chuck that was made by Jake Brubaker here in Landisville uh, a long time ago. I used it. Uh, in the late 70s, and probably most of the early 80s, if not beyond there, it's simply a bolt, uh, a washer uh, welded to it, and a, uh, a bolt head, uh, a nut. And so it's three pieces welded together. Uh, I used it for years. It was very 
uh, good. I, I was using on a soft wood like uh, Irish mahogany most of the time. And I have to, I'll have to dig it out and take a look at what it looks like compared to what you're talking about here. I appreciate it very much, Kai. Yeah, thank you. Additional uh, comments? Good I, job, Kai. You got me on here? Yep. Uh, I've used the same screw from a Novichuk for over 21 years now. And uh, I use two different size screws, one for or drills, one for softwood and one for hardwood. And using both, I have to take the piece off the chuck and unscrew the screw with a pair of water, water pumps. Uh, but I have broken two one-way screws. <laughs> If, if you, if you uh, go to Bruce Hoadley's Understanding Wood, in one of the later chapters, he goes very uh, detailed about optimum hole diameters for wood screws and even says that nails will hold much better if you first drive, drill a pilot hole that is 60% of the diameter for soft woods, physically soft, and 80% for hard woods. The last couple of days, I've just been making bowls and I've been using the S Axminster SK114, which is their latest chuck with the um, screw. I think it's the middle size screw. And I was using it on fairly hard wood. And I was having trouble getting them off afterwards when I wanted to take it off. And what I found is if I just put a little tiny piece of wax on the threads, it just, you could just almost do it with one hand. Mm -hmm. Just okay. a little tip. <laughs> I'll try that. <laughs> Anybody else on this? Was that, was that dry wood or wet wood? That was dry and it was a pretty hard wood. It was either cherry, it was cherry and uh, rapid pear. So, and it was pretty hard. When pear dries, it goes very hard. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, hey, I just got lucky and, and found this thing out in the, uh, uh, the garage, if you can see it. It's basically a nut with a, a huge washer type thing uh, welded to it. And there's there's the threaded part that's is that, welded. Is right that now. the Jake Brubaker piece? This is the Jake Brubaker. And like I said, uh, uh, I, I really got back into turning after Chucks came along. And so I, I, I used this for 10, 15 years probably. It worked great. That's a nice piece. Yeah. Do you have and, a tape and, and very very true to center? I'm surprised that that welded together very true to center. So that's my only Jake Brubaker piece I have. Um, Dave, is that um, a tapered screw that you showed us? Uh, the, the yeah, one? Is that uh, yes, it is tapered. Uh, uh, I was kind of surprised myself that to see that it was tapered, and uh, it is slightly tapered and. Uh, uh, seems to me when I use it, I just uh, drill uh, one uh, diameter hole into the wood. Uh, probably a good idea to possibly draw, uh, put in two holes, possibly a, a pilot hole that would be more to the diameter of the end and then the, the hole towards the beginning so I could get a better grip. I've never had any trouble anything splitting out or falling out or coming out of this. Wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>